Well, it, it was such a shock, really, I think, when I had a baby. You know, I just didn't, didn't expect, you know, what it was going to be like. Because, you know, I had no babies in the family at all. It was, it was just such a shock, you know, and I just didn't know a thing about babies. We lived at my mother-in-law's for the first six months and then moved, we bought a house in Stanford, Stanford Lee Hope. But uh, that was our sort of first home after when we got married. And that's where we lived until we moved here. We arrived in the monsoon in January and it had been, it rained for about six weeks when we moved in. Oh, and it was, I was that upset about it. You know, it's terrible here. You know, it's, uh, it's so different way of life and it was a long way f to the shops. You know, whereas before I used to, well, I could li literally leave the children in while, say, a five minute television program was on if it was raining and nip across to the supermarket. But of course, you know, once we got here, I had to push them both in on the push chair. Plus, you know, I had to get all my shopping. And I said it rained every day. And I used to come home thoroughly, I don't know, cheesed off, soaked to the skin, you know. To me, the worst was over once we moved. It was the period of working and living down here and still living at, back in Essex, you know. That was the worst part for me. I was home and dry, really, once we, you know, moved here. I was away with it all. I, I, I was a lonely mum, came to Honiton in my husband's job. I didn't want to come. Um, I started playgroup and uh, I needed the playgroup very much. I was very lonely and uh, I was a mum help and then I started staying when I wasn't a mum help and uh, I didn't really know any young mums because um, I lived at Kumali and didn't get the chance to come into town that often so I'd lost contact with people and children of my own children's age and the playgroup sort of gave me this so I think I, I can see the um, rural side, and, and Denise gets the uh, town yes. side, so between us we work it out. Oh, I really enjoy it at the playgroup with the children, you know. I, I think child, young children, they, they take to you, young children, F's so quick, don't they? You know, they'll come up and talk to you straight away. Clever, aren't you? It's hat. What sort of hat? You know, I do lots of things up there hat? with them, paintings and... It's interesting to see uh, children, how uh, their minds work. You can easily get into it with, you know, I suppose it's that, the age group they're at. But it's a nice morning, it's a nice change from indoors and housework. We always ask that um, the mother stays with the child on the first morning. We, you know, we don't like um, a mother to come in and dump the child. We like them to stay for as long as the child and the mother needs to stay in the group. And if the mother really doesn't feel that she can go and leave her child with us, even though the child is happy, I would never ask her to go. But, you know, so we need shopping like biscuits and this sort of thing. And then I would ask her to go out and do the shopping for us. And gradually they get the confidence then to, to go away for longer.
she's only just just now becoming involved with you know um, today was the first time she painted she's still doing things that she feels safe with things that she's seen before at home um, you know she's not risking getting herself dirty or wet yet she hasn't got enough confidence for that today is the first time she's sort of broken away from mum and sat on her own she's still spending she's a lot of time quiet. observing rather than being involved she's finding her way around the group by watching what the others mm. do It gives her something to look forward to. You know, before every day was the same. I think she seems happier for going, you know, for going there. She's always, you know, saying, what day, is it today I'm going? You know, and it just gives her something, because every day is the same otherwise, isn't it? I've talked to some mothers, but not a lot really, because I haven't been there a lot. You know, it's getting to know people more before you talk a lot, I suppose. It's true, I'm not a bit shy, you know, with the children, because I like children, I like reading them stories. We try and arrange the book corner so that it's a, a private and secluded area for a child that is uncertain. But it also works the same way for a mother, you see. She can go and sit in the book corner, hide behind the bookcase, and, and they're happy there, and, and they know that the child needs help, so therefore it gives them confidence to help that child. He's coming, he's coming, he's coming. He's coming. We find a lot of our fathers, if they get a morning off or um, for some reason, um, they'll come in and, and most of them are, are better than, um, you know, some of the mums. A lot of parents, when they move into new housing estates, really don't know anybody and they haven't got babysitters and they're very, very tired. The playgroup is somewhere where they can go and where they're offered friendship quite freely because they've got common ground with all the other people in their child. And I think if they can talk to each other, they can see that if their child perhaps doesn't do something that somebody else has done, um, they'll see that there are other children the same as theirs and that um, there's nothing to worry about. The mother is as important or more important sometimes than the child because if the mother is happy, the child will be. I think it gives them a much more relaxed atmosphere with their children when they see them playing with other children of their own age. Well, I, I really um, became involved in playgroups because um, after having two small children, I discovered that uh, through eight years I'd been totally um, overshadowed by a, su a, a successful husband and I wanted to um, find a way to develop myself. And so I became involved in playgroups. And just after that involvement, I, we moved to Honiton where there was a, a great need for a playgroup. And um, so I leapt in the deep end and um, advertised and asked for mothers to come who would be interested. And we had a meeting and uh, this is how the playgroup began. Um, it developed very rapidly. There, there needed to be quite a lot of um, discussion with many people in, in the town because they knew nothing about playgroups. In fact, it was said at one time, they thought we were going to have 20 children here reading books all morning, sitting in a ring and doing nothing else at all. Hey, Hiya, Bella! And we're going to see, because Jamie, Jamie is used to feeding, so, and we're going to ask Jamie to give him those bottles, will you? Shall I start him off, Jamie? Where do you want to Here you are. Now, when he starts to drink, he'll bat at school. Did you see him? Do you think he'll drink all that milk? Look at it, Carol. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sit very, very, very quietly and listen to the noise it makes. Oh! Oh! oh. 
the mothers were marvelous. They came and involved themselves. And uh, it came to a point when, if I was away, uh, oh, yeah, Janet, and then Denise followed, they could run the playgroup equally as well as I did. And um, I tried to persuade them that um, this was the time that I should withdraw. To start with, they said no, no, <laughs> not for anything. Um, they, they weren't ready, they felt. And so in the end, um, it, it took quite a lot, actually, because um, they said, oh, it'll fall, it'll fall, it'll all crumble. And I had to say, no, it won't. And so eventually I had to just leave, uh, literally, say, I'm going on such and such a date. And um, I would like you to take it over. And so they did. I get a tremendous amount out of it, personally. Yes, I um, Obviously yes. not financially, but just yes. rewarding, you know, yes. seeing a child come into the group very tentative mm -hmm. and gradually gaining confidence. Uh, it's a super experience, really. Yes. The mums, the friendliness, the children, just, just the whole friendly atmosphere of a playgroup and um, to get satisfaction out of helping the children, encouraging them, hearing them laugh, comforting them when they're crying, just seeing that they are generally happy. Playing here. The only time Gerald he can, you know, get off steam is when he goes to play school. Otherwise, he's uh, if he didn't go. It's very bad for children, really, you know, in this neighbourhood, like. And besides it being an upstairs flat, you know, plus that she says we don't, they don't get out much, bad enough for the play school. Plus even down the yards, you know, it's it's only a small yard, and it's a bit untidy, you know. Like, when I was little, you know, we used to put us out in the garden, 8 o'clock in the morning, we'd get that fresh air. But it's here, you can't do that. You but can't really play around here, you know. Really, it's, it's, it's uh, dirty, it's full of dog muck and yeah. potholes, you know, where the kids are just dug. Well, there's nothing Clean for the kids. For this is why there's so much vandalism. There is nothing, because they're all in gangs. They all follow everyone. I think Gerald's better mm. if you're not associating with them. I'd rather bring them up my way, not like them, you know. On the whole, like, he doesn't get up much, unless we bring him out. There's got a park up the road, we usually bring him there, don't we? Mm. If I did stay in, if it was raining, I'd stay there. He'd, uh, a couple of hours, then he'd start getting restless. And he'd be on at me, asking me all kinds of questions. And he'd get sick of the telly then, and he'd get sick of one thing. And I used to... My temper would be that wound up in myself that I knew if I hit Gerald, and he'd done something naughty and I hit him, I'd go too far. We used to go in the bedroom, remember? Mm. Remember one time you come in? I used to sit on the bed. I used to get my fist clenched and I punched the bed and I'd scream at the top of my voice. And then I'd be all right. And he'd say, he come in and say, you going soft, you going on the bed. But it's the only outlet I could do. I've even gone to the point, and I haven't told you this bit, where our Gerald's bedroom door, and it's got me that wound up. I've opened the door and I've shut it and opened it and shut it and opened it about ten times, and I really banged it, and the frame's edging out. And I have to get the hammer and knock it in. I've never told you that. I used to say, yeah. what's all the chalk on the floor for? And I'd be getting them off and mopping it up, you know. Otherwise, I would, I'd go up my mind. With Gerald, the way, you know. But I can understand mothers, the way they get so wet up that they hate the children. So I've many a time pulled my hair out. I know one thing I used to do, if I really felt really depressed, not? all them biscuits, I felt so depressed. I get a bath, wash my hair, put nice clean clothes on, and just stand on the veranda 
and that's all, and I'd feel better that way. Well, in play school, you can get everything off your chest. And, you know, Gerald, if he wasn't, a, when he's not a play, he wants your attention all the time. Like, if any friends of ours had come up with their children, you'd take a long time to mix with them. No he found it very difficult hours. to associate with children. And where he wouldn't have to play with them, would he? You know, he's there. Um, but he mixes with them more now since he's been going oh to play school. Gosh, more easy, yeah. yeah. He's quieting down. At first, he wouldn't do anything at play school, and he'd go his own way. But uh, he'll uh, have a run round as soon as he goes in. Goes on the slides, has a go with the music, has a go with the house, wrecks the house up. It's an absolute must, I think, on this estate, or any estate, where children are confined to the likes of flats. Um, it involves the whole family, I think, dads as well. We do have dads come in play school, you know, and we can sort of wear them, <laughs> wear them in. But it gives the whole link to the family and us. We're not separate. You know, they feel, look upon us as friends. And any problems, you know, they can come to us and we try to sort things out, you know, if we can. Regarding the children. No, or even the, the mums mums. as well. They yeah. sort of get, get to be more confident. And they all speak together and we sit down and have a cup of tea. Mm -hmm. And they sort of tell, tell us tales, stories, the things that involve themselves and what goes on in the estate, you know, all the little news. Yeah. What do your husbands feel about this? Well, my husband's sort of got used to it. He likes, he even likes coming to play school himself, I think. So yeah. he gets involved with the mothers, not the children. <laughs> <laughs> and he yeah. sort of sits there and has a cup of tea. And he also helps out with the equipment. He takes things out. Yeah. When you're outside play group and you're doing your normal shopping and on your travels, and you happen to bump into an old play group child, is at school, and she shouts or he shouts, 
tie on your jean, you know, and it gives you some, you know, just a lovely feeling inside. Well, play with me. He's very confident in what he's doing. He likes to be the centre of attraction most times. He's a leader, definitely a leader. Um, he's always got a crowd around him. And, um, he sort of stimulates the others into active games. He soon gets bored, you know, it doesn't matter what, he'll whip away, r run rise elsewhere, find something else of interest, and he'll, um, in fact, sometimes he's a bit difficult with other children, he'll take something off another child, which um, isn't fair. <laughs> We've got to try and, you know, stop him interfering with other children's play. He doesn't realise that, he, you know, he, he is doing so. He just wants to join in and then just leaves everything flat and runs off again. How did this playgroup begin? Well, we'd been asked to go and talk to mothers on a large new estate on the outskirts of Bootle because they very much wanted a playgroup. And so we set off one night, a cold, dark, wet, windy night, and we got to the youth club where the meeting was to be held. And the youth club uh, was known as sort of Fort Knox because it, it had to be very heavily barricaded to protect itself in the midst of a rather alien estate. The estate, incidentally, was known as Dodge City, and they did say you needed a gun and a passport to go into that estate. However, we, we got there, and we went through these big steel black doors, welcomed by the girls who'd invited us to go up to talk to the mothers. And I was shattered, absolutely shattered, when I went into that hall. Um, I've never seen anything like it. It was absolutely packed from the front to the back, and uh, every woman who was there must, it seemed to me, have a baby or a toddler or an older child on her knee. The noise was fantastic. And there was a desperation, an urgency about the meeting that communicated itself to everybody there. The, the women seemed to be leaning forward. I had rem memories of, of white faces and um, headscarves and, and nervously smoking cigarettes. And uh, the urgency about the situation gripped me. My first thought was, my God, how are we going to cope with this demand? These mothers really need somewhere for their children to play. We coped, we managed with that meeting, with the help of the mothers who'd started it off, who'd invited us up. And eventually, one playgroup to serve just 20 small children from what must have been 100 children there that night was formed. And five years later, it's still flourishing. The playgroup is run by um, the mums, really. And I think they should get the benefit of helping their own children in playgroup as well as other children. A new mum, you can always know, you always know that they lack a great deal of confidence. They usually come in very sheepish, very quiet, you know, and stay in the background a great deal. So therefore, we need to get them in slowly but surely, so we ask them to do a little job for us. Could you help us with the paint mixing or the dough? I've realised that things, the simplest of things around you every day can be used. And of course, this is where I get the mums involved again. I can get them to collect cardboard rolls and boxes and egg cartons and things. And they do take ideas out of playgroup to home. Collects of dough. Now, I don't know how many re recipes I've given out just for ordinary flour and water. They think it's something special when we suggest it to them, to take it and make it at home, they um, think it's marvellous. Even the dads um, come in and can be more sheepish than the mothers. They feel it's not a place for dads, 
with a, a gang of mums. To have a conversation with a child, I think the poor dad is even <laughs> harder for him than the mum. I think after he's been in play school a while, he'll suddenly discover that, yes, it comes easy when you think about it. But at first, I think they don't know that. They think we're marvellous. You know, they've said to us, don't know how you do it every day. Um, you, oh, you must be born to it, having the patience. And, but so I wasn't. I was <coughs> very sheepish myself, you know, when I first started. And I think this is, this is good. It gives them all confidence, mum, dad and the child. I think if we start with the parents and look after them, this must ultimately benefit the children. It has been said, you know, that there is no greater investment in children than investing in parents. I think this is what playgroups are about. We start out by looking at uh, the needs of the parent and child together. And in the short term, we've got to concentrate on the parent. Because unless we've got the mother and the father working together happily for the child's sake, we're not going to benefit the child. There is the point when suddenly they say, do you know, I never really saw him before. I'm looking at him now with new eyes. I'm seeing what he's doing. He's not just playing. He's working. And now I know why he's so exhausted when he comes in from play. And especially if he's starving at the same time, because that's a, a hell of a mixture with a child, a tired child and a hungry child. But I see it. And because I see it, I'm patient and much more tolerant of him. And I'm interested. And I peep around the door to see what he's doing. And I watch his fingers and I watch his hands. And I see the absorption, the utter concentration. No wonder he doesn't hear me. He's not being a little... He truly doesn't hear me. He's shut off the outside world and he's in that rich, marvellous land of play. And I think this is what the mothers do come to see. But it's a nice morning, it's a nice change from indoors and housework. We always ask that um, the mother stays with the child on the first morning. We, you know, we don't like um, a mother to come in and dump the child. We like them to stay for as long as the child and the mother needs to stay in the group. And, and if the mother really doesn't feel that she can go and leave her child with us, even though the child is happy, I would never ask her to go. But, you know, so if we need shopping like biscuits and this sort of thing, and then I would ask her to go out and do the shopping for us. And gradually they get the confidence then to, to go away for longer.
she's only just just now becoming involved with you know um, today was the first time she painted she's still doing things she feels safe with things that she's seen before at home um, you know she's not risking getting herself dirty or wet yet she hasn't got enough confidence for that today is the first time she's sort of broken away from mum and sat on her own she's still spending a lot of time quiet. observing rather than being involved she's finding her way around the group by watching what the others do it gives us something to look forward to you know before every day was the same I think she seems happier for going, you know, for going there. She's always, you know, saying, what day, is it today I'm going? You know, and it just gives us something, because every day is the same otherwise, isn't it? I've talked to some. I started staying when I wasn't a mum help. And uh, I didn't really know any young mums because um, I lived at Kumali and didn't get the chance to come into town that often. So I'd lost contact with people and children of my own children's age. And the playgroup sort of gave me this. So I think I, I can see the um, rural side and, and Denise gets the uh, town yes. side. So between us, we work it out. Oh, I really enjoy it at the playgroup with the children, you know. I, I think child, young children, they, they take to you, young children. They're so quick, don't they? You know, they'll come up and talk to you straight away. Clever, aren't you? It's hat. What sort of hat? You know, I do lots of things up there with them, paintings. and It's interesting to see uh, children how uh, their minds work, you can easily get into it with, you know, I suppose it's that, the age group they're at. Right. Well, it, it was such a shock, really, I think, when I had a baby, you know, I just didn't, didn't expect, you know, what it was going to be like, because, you know, I had no babies in the family at all, it was, it was just such a shock, you know, and I just didn't know a thing about babies. We lived at my mother-in-law's for the first six months and then moved, we bought a house in Stanford, Stanford Lee Hope. But uh, that was our sort of first home after when we got married. And that's where we lived until we moved here. We arrived in the monsoon in January and it had been, it rained for about six weeks when we moved in. Oh, and it was, I was that upset about it. You know, it's terrible here. You know, it's, uh, it's so different way of life and it was a long way f to the shops. You know, whereas before I used to, well, I could li literally leave the children in while say a five minute television program was on if it was raining and nip across to the supermarket. But of course, you know, once we got here, I had to push them both in on the push chair. Plus, you know, I had to get all my shopping. And I said it rained every day. And I used to come home thoroughly, I don't know, cheesed off, soaked to the skin, you know. To me, the worst was over once we moved. It was the period of working and living down here and still living at, back in Essex, you know. That was the worst part for me. I was home and dry, really, 
once we, you know, moved here, I was away with it all. I, I, I was a lonely mum, came to Honiton in my husband's job. I didn't want to come. Um, I started playgroup and uh, I needed the playgroup very much. I was very lonely and uh, I was a mum help and then